Okay, today we're going to be analyzing our Unit 2 data on distance, midpoint, construction, and um, angle pairs. Um, overall, not a bad turnout, um, as always. Some are good, some are not so good. And those are the places we want to focus today. Um, what I did to make it a little more understandable is at the top column, put the type of question that we're we're looking at. So distance midpoint is the first five questions. Okay, as we look at uh, question number one, um, not a real big concern there. Any comments? Nope. No. Um, this was where you had to find the other endpoint. What I found a lot of my students doing is finding the midpoint of the two points that were given. Yeah. instead mm -hmm. of the other endpoint. But the one uh, technique that they seem to um, be most successful with in life is using Desmos, plotting the two points and then how uh, far over and down, over and down to get to the next point. So when they use that technique, they seem to have been very successful. I know there's shortcuts also in Desmos, and I showed my kids both ways, and I think that was a detriment because they wanted to go through and just do midpoint, and they'd be like, well, how do I put endpoint in? I was like, that's not a viable way to do this, and you've seen other ways. So I think we're going to cut back on some of those shortcuts and not show them those, and if they can do them by hand, you work the way that I showed them the first time. Right. I was surprised at the number of my students that actually used the formula. Um, you know, like x is equal to two times midpoint minus the endpoint. Um, because they do tend to steer away from that one, but I was really pleased to see the number that did. I think it helps them do when you let them label each point. Like, for example, uh, if they enter the first endpoint and then they go on the label, I'm talking about the, the death marks. When they put the label, say, put endpoint, and then they enter the second point and they and label it midpoint. And from there, once it show up in the graph, they would know where is the location of the other endpoint, and that will help them whether it is above the midpoint or whether it is below below the first endpoint. So that will help them to identify the location of the endpoint. Yeah. All right. Um, so I don't see anything alarming about number two. How about y'all? Uh, and number three is a little alarming. Because this was distance station. Oh, I know what this was. Yeah. Um, they can use it. They actually got the right answer, yeah. but they got the wrong answer. I was stunned at the number of kids that do not know how to round. Right, right. And when it said to two decimals, they would go over two decimals and stop. But the third decimal was actually greater than five, five or greater. So, um, that was why most of mine missed um, number three, is because either they just made up their own rounding and said 7.1, or they didn't know how to round off. And the number of students that asked me, what does it mean by two decimals? Yep. They just didn't know. Um, and going through this, like the kids, they call, I'm like, if you get stuff and I call me over, if you want me to like, kind of verify, because really, I wanted to know if they could do the question or not. And so if it came down to that, you know, if it was 7.61 or 7.62, not really the biggest deal in my mind, as long as they knew how to do it in the first place. But I'm thinking maybe for decimal ones if in the future, if we have to do this, that we should maybe make those ones multiple choice or something to that effect. Um, obviously, you're going to probably need to go over things that they should have learned in middle school, <laughs> so that they know how to round. But at the same time, I don't think, like for our test, to test them on the fact that if they know how to do something, maybe we should do multiple choice for that one from now on. And yeah. then number five, did the same thing. They found the distance of AM, they did not find the distance of AB. Yeah. yeah. Of course, I'm pretty proud of my students. Frank, you proud of yours? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. What? The moment they saw for X, they look at the multiple choice options. They go, oh, X is four, so they circle four. And it's like, oh, we were also talking to B. I was like, all right, take a second to look, read the question 
again and see if things are So you can see that uh, questions one, two, and three, very good. Uh, that's the vocabulary that we were battling whether to put in to the test or not. So clearly they know the vocabulary. So we go on to question number four. And uh, even though we, this was surprised me that they missed this one because normally we, they answered S, but this time X was angle four. Oh, yeah. we? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you know what? They were used to find an angle with the coefficient bigger than one. Yeah. So what did they do wrong? I think my kids had an issue identifying that it was even a linear pair. Right. They, with the lettering, because there was more lines coming off of it, which they should have identified, but they didn't, actually being able to see that it covered the whole thing. That's the great thing. I, I, I got I got a bunch of really wacky answers. Uh, yeah. You know, and I, I couldn't, I mean, for life, me, most of these wrong answers, um, I, I can't make an equation that would come up with that. Well, now I'm going to tell you something that my students have been sharing with me because on Tuesday I had this room full of people after school yeah. going over this test. And I had more than half of them said they had the right equation, but they put it in Desmos wrong. Instead of saying equals 180, they said equals each other. Yeah. So that's not the right equation. It's not, but on their paper they had it right. They just didn't put it into the Desmos the way it was on the paper. Now, I can't explain that one. Uh, or the other thing that they did was that they did add them together, but they didn't say equals anything. So as a result of that, you're going to get a graph, maybe. But so are they not solving the equation on the paper? Do what? Are they not solving the equation on the paper? Some of them are. Some of them do. Most of, most of them do in Desmos. Yes. The equation written on the paper. And if they put a minus or a plus or they leave out a letter or a number, they're done. Okay. So for number nine, yes, it's an optical illusion. I even shared with my students, and I don't know if y'all did this, but um, but these two angles that have no measure, I would show them scratch it out. Now it doesn't exist. And when you scratch it out, it makes the other angles pop. What kind are they? And they would all say, well, they're vertical. It um, also helps them when you let them identify the kind of angle. So say, for example, what kind of angle is this acute? What about the other side of those? Are they the same thing? No. What will you do in your equation? Are you going to equal them? Does it make sense to you? If you're going to equal them, then what is of those and what is of you? Something like that that will, you know, let them think. Uh, that, that's a good fact because I mean, then your letter team is something that, I mean, they learn acute obtuse back in fourth grade. And, and, and so they may not know any geometry, but, but they can recognize acute obtuse. And so uh, that's been successful with uh, some students that I've worked with that have really struggled. And they can kind of grab on that thing that they're comfortable with already from previous years. And then you know, it's just, Baby step by baby step, right? So you look at vertical angles, that will help them. You know, right. you look at the angle of, you know, on, on that side, you look at the other side across it, so they look the same thing. So I think we all fall in the same category uh, as we're saying the right things, we're teaching the right things, we're giving the right tips. But uh, I think that this unit in particular. Uh, was a, a wake up call for most of our students. Well, I think they had a call for the confidence on the first test too because it's such a computer concept that has to be over and recognize mm -hmm. how <clears throat> communication is in this manner too. Exactly. So well, when I started when I started my lessons yes this past week on unit three, wow, what a difference in the demeanor of the students hanging on to every word that I'm saying, 
asking questions immediately when they don't understand. Uh, there's a huge change between that and this. But the good news is that they are coming in for me. They are coming in after school to get me extra help. They do get to take the test over again. And um, I think they're taking it a little more seriously now. Yeah. So this is the first, uh, as I said, as I told my students, I said, this unit just beat you up a little bit. So um, let's just figure it out and move on. Because after we get through with uh, transformations, this distance midpoint and angle pairs are going to be with us in every unit for the rest of the year. I also did the very first day of unit three for my warm up was literally like a 15 question warm up going over the probably missed questions from this test because they needed to see that. And they actually did hang out to everywhere too because it's like, holy crap, I didn't do so well on that test. And this way they would help them to redo uh, their test corrections before they retake it. Exactly. And I had two kids retake and they've done pretty well so far. So we'll see how it goes.